Hello everyone and welcome by the Arcade Saga. My name is Elkian Wiersma and today we're going to do an update video on my uh, Leodoro and according to my uh, videos list on, uh, on YouTube it was about five months ago that we did uh, repot her and I promised you guys to do an update on, on her because it was a quite a nice repot it was actually an up potting where I also did uh, up pot quite some uh, aerial roots so I think it's nice to see how they are doing and as you can see she's currently uh, in bloom she's just starting uh, to bloom we even have a spike here that is, is still in bud but I thought this is a nice uh, time to do an update so I'm going to uh, take her uh, off this uh, wall and we will uh, put her inside the orchid room on the up potting table so I can uh, take her out but before I do that just quickly you can uh, have a little bit of idea of the light levels and uh, this is a south southwest facing uh, greenhouse so she does get quite some light she's fairly close to the roof and I also have some uh, artificial light there as well so the uh, van, uh, family offices that are uh, yeah right up to the roof to get some uh, extra light as well the more uh, down we go the less intensity of course and the Leodor is fairly uh, high, just above middle, I think. Because I think this one is uh, does like a little bit more light than the more regular fells that we find in the uh, supermarket, for example. So yeah, generally speaking, the uh, fells with the lighter leaves are the summer bloomers. <laughs> Most of the times do uh, like a little bit more light as well. So I have my summer bloomers here and I think the Leodora is somewhere in between that. So therefore it's a little bit lower, but yes, it still uh, does get quite some, uh, some light for a fell. Not get layer light, but a bit higher light than, uh, than normal. It's always hard to uh, put it in words, the level of light, but I hope you have a, uh, a general idea now. So that's it and done. Let's take her out of, uh, off of this wall and uh, have a look inside. We're also going to uh, measure the parts per million and the pH in there. And uh, I will talk about that uh, a little bit more. And there we are inside of the orchid room. So uh, I uh, can, uh, first thing I can do is cut this spike. It's an older spike. Let me quickly cut it off. There we go. And yeah, this one is... Uh, the fragrance is absolutely fantastic. So if you can, if you didn't already have, you probably would buy a, a Leodora. They are beautiful. The bloom, blooms are wonderful, but also the fragrance. I think from all my fails, this is my uh, favorite one fragrant wise and blooms as well. It's uh, in the top five at least. <laughs> it's so beautiful. So uh, yeah, and I also love the colors of the leaves. So uh, those uh, lighter, greenish colors I really uh, do enjoy as well and this one is actually uh, growing kind of funny you see multiple leaves here on the camera let me show you why let me zoom in a little bit because this one is making a basil whoops basil kiki as well so I need to adjust the camera a little bit there we go and this leaf this bit pointy leaf is coming from this basil cake as you can see so yeah it's uh it's nice it's just a little bit underneath the actual uh, crown of the mother plant because this is the uh, a leaf that's coming from the crown but yeah i don't know how she will do it but she will find a way probably to uh grow uh, towards the light as well but uh yeah i'm just going to leave it on there I, th I think it could be fun if it's big enough it will shoot out some spikes as well and then we will have uh, even more spikes in bloom so that would be nice of course let me turn this around so we can have a look at the beautiful blooms a little bit better and i used a uh, tray for this one as well because originally the outer part was uh, used for uh, same hydroponics so this there are holes in the back <laughs> and i have some water leaking out and that's not a problem, but therefore I use the trays. But now, uh, yeah, of course, the moment of truth. <laughs> Let's see how those aerial roots are doing. And I uh, have no clue, I didn't uh, speak. So for me, it's uh, a surprise as well. So I'm just going to lift her out and then we will uh, see how the, like I said, how the aerial roots have done. And they 
should be fine. Let's First, some water need to go out. And I'm going to put her on this tray. Let me see. Oh, yes, here we see the roots. Let me zoom in so you can see it as well. I hope I can do it like this. Yes. There we are. You see here, beautiful green roots. And I see... Uh, some uh, branching going on there as well so this is uh, at least this part is uh, looking very beautiful let me turn it around a little bit slowly so i don't make you guys dizzy oh yeah beautiful look at this very nice green color here and also here and we have some green roots even here in the back as you can see Hopefully, yeah, there. A growing tip over here, just next to my finger. This is uh, becoming a new aerial root. And we have some more over here. There we go. So, so far, you guys, I cannot find a root that didn't make it. So that's a, a huge success. I had no idea because sometimes you might lose an aerial root. But to be honest, this is most of the times what happens to me, to my orchids. If I uh, put up the aerial roots, we even have some aerial roots here. Well, they are not aerial anymore, of course, but they adjusted perfectly fine. So a nice five monthly update. There's happened a lot in this pot. A lot of new roots. And like I said, the aerial roots start to, to branch uh, as well. So yeah, this... Uh, this is beautiful and this is you, now I, I can show you uh, guys that it, it can be happen it can be done Let, let's put it like this using your aerial roots but I, I uh, don't suggest it but I, I uh, in, in if you don't need to then you obviously you let those aerial roots uh, be aerial but for an up putting and that uh, reminds me of a viewers question uh, I'm sorry I don't uh, remember your, your name on top of my head, but it was a, a very nice question um, about the area roots, why I even uh, do pot them up. Well, um, if I have the chance, I always pot up my area roots, and that is because the orchid grows bigger uh, and it gets older and older, and at a certain point, those first roots do get uh, so old that they just die off. So you don't do anything wrong, but it's just too old. It, it's just starts, uh, it's, it's a nat natural habit, uh, habit to uh, um, grow new roots and, and have new roots taking over uh, the, the older roots, basically. So if I have the chance, I try to uh, put those aerial roots in there. So if I do lose, lose now the older roots on here, as we just saw, I probably will have no problem at all because all those new roots are established as well. So probably we'll, we'll, we'll not even notice any dead roots until we start to unpot it and we obviously see them, but the older roots are in the middle of the pot. But uh, because the plant is just growing and it's blooming and it's doing its, its thing because we now have way more a root in the pot as well. So that's basically just my simple logic behind it. And that's why I do pot up area roots. And I found that in cell watering in this system, you can, the, those area roots do not die off. They, they somehow adjust or continue to grow. I'm not completely sure what happens, but they just don't die off, which is beautiful. But I didn't have it happen back in the days when I uh, grew them in bark and sphagnum moss. I should basically say it, it didn't work, uh, putting up the aerial roots. But in this system, somehow it does. I have no explanation for it, but it, it works. And especially with my fells, I have no problem with them and they uh, adapted uh, very nicely. And that's the fun thing uh, of this one, this repotting and this update, because I did film the beginning and obviously I will link the video, the original one, or I already have, where you can see the actual uh, repotting and then you see how much area roots did go in that pot. I even had 
those uh, clots going on to wetten the roots to make them a little bit more flexible i did did break a few but you can see uh, they uh, they are still perfectly fine to continue to grow even though they break um, as long as you don't break the inner root of course the development can break a little bit that's okay uh, if you have to of course try to avoid it i try to avoid it as well but it those areas roots were so long so i couldn't avoid it but anyhow they can still continue to grow or to start to grow again so yeah i think this is a yeah the fragrance is fantastic you guys a little bit distracting <laughs> because it's so beautiful but yeah it's absolutely stunning so this is absolutely a great success let me show you one more time oh that's a leaf <laughs> you can see most of the roots are in front of the plant but yeah this is a beautiful root system nonetheless so yeah i was really looking forward to making this update because because it's such a nice way to see that there is more possible with the arrow roots than we most of the times might think or uh, the advices are maybe um more um based on uh, organic media organic repots and these days we uh, use still uh, more and more inorganic media or a, a few growers of course i should say <laughs> but yeah then the setting is different so you have sometimes different uh, solutions or different uh, ways to grow your organs you can can uh, can try things and that's why i start try uh, try things out so i have a get a more general idea of what is possible if that does make sense. If it doesn't, please uh, leave a question in the comments. I don't mind. This is my parts per million uh, meter. So it basically measures how much stuff is in the water. It doesn't only measure fertilizer, it does measure basically everything, dust or uh, residue from the pumice, etc. But I will, uh, will give uh, an, um, a reading of how much is going on there. And if you do watch or have watched my older videos on how uh, I grow my orchids, especially um, my customized self-watering setup. And I should link it now. Where is the reading go? Oh, I did. Sorry, I did push the wrong button. Uh, but anyhow, you see that uh, I measured the parts per million as well. And I explained that I don't like to go over 200 parts per million with every orchid, big pot, small pot. Phenoliopsis, Miltoniopsis, uh, Cattleya, it doesn't matter. I don't go over 200 parts per million. Or if I measure it and it's over 200, I will clean the pot, I will flush the orchid and put it back with basically only, most of the times only oil, oil water with a little bit of seaweed. So I start again, uh, basically. Because we then have too much fertilizer, too much stuff in there. I found that uh, if you go over too much, over the 200 parts per million limit, and uh, as you are, uh, do as me, don't forget that I do not flush these orchids. That's the big important uh, in this system. Then you don't want to have too much uh, fertilizer in here, otherwise you will have salt built up. And those will affect the roots, not in a positive way. Uh, chances are very big that your roots will start to die off. So therefore I don't go over the 200. And this one, I hope you can see it, 115. So it's perfect, absolutely perfect. And the funny thing is, this is also, this reading, uh, these readings are very important, uh, f at least for me, because 115. It, uh, it's now starting, yeah, it's spring, so I now may give them a little bit more fertilizer, but in winter, I gave them around 50 parts per million. Sometimes it was 30, sometimes it was 80, but basically I aim for 15 parts. Doesn't matter what I put in there, 15 parts as a total. So if we consider that, if I did that for a few months, for through the winter months, and we will, and we have a reading of 115, uh, it also says that these plants do not uh, use as much fertilizer in those months, which for me is kind of makes sense because it's darker, it's colder. So it, they do not use as much fertilizer a feed because they do not grow as much or not as quickly. This one was obviously still growing through the winter months, but very slowly. It will take off uh, more 
coming months. But so a uh, reading of 115 probably should be around 50 parts per million if I had an arc that was really, really growing. Does that make sense? I hope it does make sense because if I put in 50 and constantly 50 or 80, we obviously have a sort of build up because this one has 115. It's still okay. We are still not over the 200, but that's does say something that does uh, say something and for me it does say that this arcade is growing but it's very slowly so i don't have to put in more fertilizer because she doesn't take it up yet i hope that does make sense for me uh for, for me for you for us for all <laughs> let me uh, check the ph as well i should have put a meter in because it takes a while to uh, get a nice reading. Okay, I am back. And this is actually quite funny. Kind of funny because this is exactly what I keep telling in my videos. Look at this, this is 5.56. So it's a very low pH. I like it around seven. But if you're longer on my uh, channel, you probably know that I, from time to time, keep mentioning that if you don't flush your orchids around five or six months, the pH starts to drop. Well, this was uh, recently, oh, well, five months ago, repotted. So we have a, a heck of a lot of new media in there, which does rise the pH. But if you don't flush, five, six months, here is the proof. <laughs> At least in my climate, of course, in my care. But I think this does make sense now. So that is why I use my calcium magnesium powder. I will grab it and I, then I can demonstrate what that does with the pH as well. So I will be right back. And I am back with the calcium magnesium powder, which is basically uh, the same as the garden lime, if I uh, have that corrected, but I don't can I cannot get uh, the uh, garden lime here. But this stuff, I have a link in my video description if you want to check it out. But calcium, magnesium, and I, uh, I will put this in to, to let that pH raise again. About one scoop, as you can see, do a little bit more. This is quite a heavy uh, pot, a big pot. But this is the amount, it's very, very small. So I'm just going to drop that in like this. I'm going to take my pH, pH meter again, so 5.6 basically, 5.56, sorry for the glare. Let us see what will happen now. I'm going to stir this a little bit, stir this a little bit, so it does go, uh, does it works a little bit quicker. Otherwise, if, if you don't uh, just leave it in there, it takes a little bit longer to adjust the pH. But it, uh, that's, that's fine because I, do my uh, adding from the calcium magnesium in the pots once every six months, sometimes even longer, depends. But that's for another video. <laughs> Just need to wait a again a little bit for this to stabilize. Uh, you know how the pH meters work. Probably they take a little bit of time. There we go, I think. Stir a little bit, yes. So let me get the water off and here we are. Same pot. Uh, I'm sorry for the glare. It's a little bit much. I hope you can see it. It's uh, 7.4, what was it? I have any, yeah. Here we go again, 7.43. So we did go from 5.5 to 7.4 basically. 5.6, 5.4. was about uh, the limit. On the, uh, everything underneath 5.5, not good. So uh, it was uh, right in time. And now I adjusted this and this is probably good to go for at least six months or even longer. And then it slowly will go down again to the 5.5 measure, something like that. But I keep an eye on it. I measure them every, every so many months. Nowadays it's about six months. In my earlier videos, uh, when I did the checkups that I did film, it was every three months. And that was because then I only used uh, about one, th one fourth of this scoop. So I had just about 
this amount in there just a teeny tiny bit and i found that i can use a whole scoop let me uh grab on some something like this we just uh, did put in and that will uh, last for six months at least sometimes it will uh, go even for eight or ten months especially when i do it in uh fall then it lasts a little bit longer and i think that has to do with the war uh, uh, weather i'm sorry the temperatures outside if it's warmer and more sun there is i think a little bit more going on inside of those pots uh bacteria wise so therefore it doesn't last as long it then probably does six months so it depends on uh which time of year i put this in basically what i'm saying and uh so this one probably need a checkup in in about six months again if i don't forget I, we can do it on camera again and to see how uh, how uh, it does but i must say that in the end of the month i will do the rest of my arcs as well and oh yeah that's something i need to mention as well this is a fairly big pot so this does get one scoop the 12 centimeter pots also do get one scoop but if i have the smaller ones uh, those are about 10 centimeters those get a, a half a scoop of this stuff so a little bit less because the pots are uh, smaller and thereby we have not as much water in the reservoir so i hope that those make sense but i wanted to mention that as well in this video and the funny thing is i didn't prepare this of course like i said i had no idea what was going on in that pot uh, in that pot but it ended uh up uh, basically uh, in a video that that explains my uh, whole growing system in a nutshell we have the up potting what we can we do with the aerial roots and what happens after five months we just saw i uh, normally i can only say it and you only have my words but now you had the actual view as well at the actual results of the meters etc so yeah for me as a grower this is probably one of my best videos if i was uh, looking on youtube especially back in the days these types of videos i personally was very interested in because i wanted to see what what happened and really see it see it and and um try to uh, like i always explain try to translate what i see into my own uh, growing environment into in my own pots so to uh, so to speak so i hope uh, you found this uh, video uh, as helpful as well but like i said it's it's basically in a nutshell so uh, a very very nice video uh, to make so uh, anyhow what to do now well i'm going to put it back in a pot and then uh, we will uh, place it her back in the in the greenhouse so let me lift this pot and uh yeah like i said it was very nice to do this update so i am planning on doing this uh, these updates uh, updates more often it's, i think it's very nice to see but anyhow um i'm going to put her back in 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 uh, the greenhouse so i will meet you guys there <laughs> and here we are again like <laughs> nothing ever happened back in the greenhouse and obviously still beautiful look at those colors and those details but anyhow yeah it's it's actually fun this is such a great video for me uh, like i said to make so thank you so much for your good questions it's very uh, inspiring otherwise i may not have done this update already so but yeah you guys are asking uh, about these questions of area roots and the system in general uh, made me think about it and I thought yeah this is a beautiful time to do an update and it turned out to become a very nice video if you ask me like I said in a nutshell we uh, could have a look at my growing system so this works basically for all my orchids the especially the ones that are growing in self-watering and as you can see it for me it works they do wonderfully well I have a heck of a lot of blooms soon we're going to go into details on these uh, fell blooms but also the aerial roots going on so yeah i'm really really happy uh, how things are going here i just need to be on top of that calcium magnesium i don't uh i yeah i cannot forget it to, for too long a uh, time because otherwise the ph will be too low for too long and i will lose my root systems and that is what i needed to learn but if I'm in time, they will do perfectly fine and uh, grow beautiful roots. 
aerial, aerial routes that we uh, may put up one day like we did with the uh, Leodoro to uh, prepare our orchids for the future. What I also forget to mention is that I love the look of aerial routes, so don't get me wrong. I don't put them out because I don't like the look of it because this is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But yeah, I sacrificed this look for a few months just to keep that arc growing, like I explained. And it will make new aerial, aerial roots, uh, like we saw in uh, doing this uh, Leodore. One is just getting over the pot again, so we will have some aerial roots soon. So that's not because I don't like them, I love them, but uh, we need them in the near future. Well, actually, the plants need them. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video as well. I can imagine that you still have some questions. Please uh, leave them in the comment section below. And thank you also for all your comments and questions you uh, left me over the uh, last couple of months. I really enjoyed them and I always try to get uh, back to them and leave you a comment that I read it and, and I will try to give you uh, some answer if you left a question, etc. Uh, sometimes it may take me a few days. That's just because I'm uh, then too busy with my work. Uh, and also the same uh, is for my emails, because I did get some emails some, from some viewers, so thank you so much for that as well. But yeah, it may take me a little while to answer them, but I will try my best to answer them as quickly as I can. But as you may know, as I did mention before in videos, we have a uh, bird shelter or a wildlife center, uh, however you want to call it. <laughs> But and this is the season, the spring season starts where it does get very busy with, with the youngsters. So we have uh, the young am animals coming in. Those need uh, attention several times a day. They need feed and, and their medicine if they need them, etc. And so I, I, I'm, I'm very busy these days. I don't mind it at all, but the only thing is that I not always can film as much as I would like. So I might, may end up making one video per week for a, a little while, but I try to do more, at least two, like we uh, have currently going on the uh, repotting Wednesdays, etc. But anyhow, so you know a little bit, if you don't hear from me, it's just because of work. Uh, because I'm absolutely not ignoring you guys, because I love doing this. It's beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful, and I love to share. So I hope you like, uh, like these videos, and uh, if you have them, leave your questions. They are very inspiring for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, I really hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye-bye.